So today we're going to do some tricep training. Um, you have to, as an endurance rider, you have to truss up your horse um, before you start your ride and at the end to pass the vetting. And for the longer distances, every loop you have to vet as well. So it's a really important part of the sport. So other equestrian disciplines get to dress up and look really good during the trot up and I'm super jealous of them. Um, the reason endurance riders don't is because um, for FEI riders, once we've trotted up, we have to go and weigh in. So we need to be wearing whatever we're going to wear on race day. Um, for the national riders, once they've vetted, they've only got half an hour from vetting to tack up, get ready and get to the start line. So there's no time for um, changing and looking nice and then getting into your riding gear. And the third reason is because we all have to trot up in these. Ta -da! So even if we were wearing nice stuff, no one would actually notice. They are usually about this big, so I get a hairband normally and tie them up underneath and kind of curl it under because otherwise it gets in the way of the saddle when I'm riding as well. So this is Tizzy, we've just brought her in from the field. Don't worry, she's not always this clean. We did give her a bath yesterday. Um, so she's 22 years old. She's now my retired endurance horse. We just compete for a bit of fun every now and again. Um, I've had her since I was 10 years old, so this pony is my best friend. She's only 14 hands, but she is quite the pocket rocket. So she's going to help us explain to you how um, endurance vettings work. So first of all, um, a vet will take the heart rate. They do this first so that they don't agitate any horses that don't like being kind of touched and have people around them. So they either use a stethoscope um, and take the heart rate over one minute, or they use a electronic heart rate monitor. It gets put on the horse and gets put just behind the left shoulder here. Most endurance horses are quite wet coming into vetting because they've just been crewed. And then at the end of your vetting lane, the heart rate will pop up, so it gives the spectators something to look for. So those are the two ways in which um, the vet will take the heart rate. So for the rest of the vetting, the vets will check things like muscle tone, so they'll run their hands down the back of the horse, test um, the muscles, um, just check their back, down where the girth is, make sure there are no sores or anything. <laughs> hey Wiz. I know you've done this all before. Um, they'll check down the legs, make sure there's no lumps or bumps, scrapes, swellings. They'll then check for hydration. The way they do this is the pinch test. So they'll grab a bit of skin, pinch it. Let's get to these beautiful <laughs> white mane out of the way so you can see. So they'll just pinch a bit of skin on the neck, pull it up like that. It doesn't hurt the horse. You can see she's fine. Let it go and then time how long it goes down. If it takes ages to go from here and it's like super slow to go back flat, then the horse is dehydrated. They will also have a look at respiratory rate, make sure that the horse isn't any respiratory distress. Come here, sweetheart. They'll check mucous membrane in the eyes and the nose. I won't do it with her, she really doesn't like it, do you? Um, and then they'll check capillary refill. I know, I don't want your kisses right now. You have such a messy nose. So for capillary refill, she hasn't brushed her teeth this morning. They'll press the nice soft pink bit on their gums and if it returns back pink, um, usually under a second, then the capri refill is fine and you can get scored two seconds, three seconds, um, whatever. So any of those parameters, if a vet isn't happy, that is grounds for being eliminated from the competition. So it's really good to practice all of these things with your horse so they know what's coming and also so you know what's normal for your horse. So during vetting, you're allowed to take two people in per horse. Um, if you're at an international event, you're also allowed to take the chef to keep or vet. But for national events, you're only allowed two people per horse. This is to stop the vetting getting too clogged up, keep people nice and safe. So normally I go with one of my crew and we have a routine. So as you can see, Tizzy is super relaxed. She knows what she's doing. But I try and get nice and close to this side of um, her head while the vet is on that side taking the heart rate and just really slow my breathing and relax because they really pick up on if you're nervous. Um, and Tiz tends to kind of start to drop her head, close her eyes. You want your horse to be super pumped and up for it out on course, but as soon as they come into a vetting scenario, if you always stand the same way, act the same way, hopefully they'll know then now is the time to relax. My crew stand at the bum end, so they'll be about here, ready to take the rug off when we go for trot up, but it also stops her spinning her bum around, so the vet that gets her to, Joe, she'll stand nice and still for the vet and the vet can take the heart rate without any 
issues. Um, we found especially when we've got a horse that's super pumped in the vetting, if there's no one stood here and you've got the vet and the vet rider here, that is where they go, their bum comes around and I want them to stay nice and still. So in different yards have different trotting up techniques. My way isn't the only way, it just works for me and it, it works for her. So without further ado, let's show you how. So as soon as the vet has finished with the vetting, I like to train my horses to voice command so that they'll go straight away. I don't have to kind of swing my rope or anything. Some people do, that's fine. Whatever works for you. And you want to get into a good trot as soon as possible. So not kind of a slow acceleration, but straight into it. Also want a nice fast stop at the top. Nice and slow, big loop around the top. Don't be afraid to kind of come out of your lane and go down, make sure there's no one either side. You want to be at the side of them, rope nice and loose so you're not, not masking anything. Look at the vet and smile because it goes a long way, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> So on top of those tips for trotting up, um, the other things that I would do is kind of build it into everyday life. So when you're leading your horse up from the field, trot up. When you get off in the school, have a go at trotting up. Whenever you can, build it in so it becomes kind of part of normal life. As an endurance rider, you will finish the ride. The horse will probably be a little bit tired, especially in kind of its first years. So you want it to kind of know that routine and, and know what's happening. Also, endurance horses, depending on the level of event, so national rides are going to have just a cone for the trot up, but the bigger rides are going to have gazebos, crowds, um, tannoys, flower pots. So getting them used to everything as much as you can and getting them relaxed standing under a gazebo can really help you because you need that heart rate to be as low as it can. So you might only see a few trot ups on the camera, but I'm a bit out of breath because we've done quite a lot of takes. But hopefully that helps the kind of do's and don'ts of, of trotting up. So don't look back at your horse, hold the lead rope really tight, do a slow acceleration, handbrake turn at the top. But do teach your horse to have a command to go straight into trot, keep them at your shoulder, make a nice wide turn at the top, look straight ahead at the vet and don't run in front of your horse. And hopefully that helps you with your next endurance vetting. Good luck.